All right, today I'm gonna make a simple dialogue on an NPC that will bring up a more sophisticated UI. Let's say I wanna make a card game or a fortune telling game. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on my non-playing character. Dialogue is an easy solution. You just pop it on there. You got something clickable. Would you like your fortune told? You hit yes. Boom, now you can start working on your on your game. Like this could be a little card game or something. I thought that'd be pretty cool. It's a great way to get up and running in no time at all. Dialogues aren't very configurable, but they are fast. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Let's get a fresh world. I got one right here. And we'll go to plugins, right? So this is a fresh world. Go up in the tabs here, plugins, build rig, R15, man rig. There we go. And you can pick any of those rigs, uh, as long as it has a head, right? And they all have a head. So his name's Dummy, I wanna change that. I'm gonna go over to the Explorer here. I'm gonna write uh, Fortune Teller, right? I'm gonna open up Fortune Teller Guy, all right? On the Humanoid, I'm gonna select that because I wanna get rid of this name, uh, the name tag itself. So on the Humanoid, go to Display Distance Type. It says Viewer, say None. And now you won't have that junking up your dialogue stuff. All right, now Roblox makes you either put clothes on your NPC or body colors. So hit the plus sign on your fortune teller right here on the right. Hit a B for body colors. Boom, now you have some basic body colors. Cool. Let's go down to the head. There we go, we got the head of the fortune teller. Hit the plus sign, type a D, and then you're gonna see dialogue. That's what we want, we want a dialogue. And you'll see that the head is the parent of the dialogue. All right, so we select dialogue. Down here in the properties, whoops, let me get rid of that. In the properties, we'll see something called uh, initial prompt. That's gonna be its first question when you click on it. So we'll say, would you like your fortune read, All right? And then we have to give it a choice, right? So goodbye is by default. Let's go to dialogue, hit the plus, dialogue choice. So now you'll have two choices. You'll have whatever this choice is and then the goodbye choice. I'm gonna make this the yes choice. I'm just gonna say yes, All right? I renamed dialogue choice to yes. Let's, and now we have two things we can configure. Well, we have more, but two things we're gonna configure. User dialogue. This is the choices that I'm given that I can say. So I'm gonna say yes. And then the response dialogue is what he could say back, right? After I say yes, I'll just say great, cool beans. All right, now let's try it. So we go here, hit the play. And there's a little guy, hit the plus sign. Would you like your fortune read? See, I have two choices. Goodbye, I'm just gonna make it close, yes. He'll say, great, cool, but we don't want it to just say great. We want the table to appear, right, with the cards and stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn my game off. Let's make sure you turn your game off or things will not save, right? You'll do stuff and it won't, it won't stick. All right, so the game is off. Go to starter GUI or starter GUI. Hit the plus sign, screen GUI. Hit the plus sign, frame. And we'll just make a big old frame. Cool. We can make it square. If you want to make it round, if you want to make it round, you want to make this more square. Just go to your plus sign on your frame, UI corner, and that's going to cause rounding on whatever element you put on it. So the first number is scale. So 0.5 is 50% rounding. This is going to make it as circular as it can be, right? So we have an oval here because we didn't have a complete circle on our frame. If we make that smaller or a, a, an even square, see that we can make it. I like that, I like the oval though. It looks more table-ish. So I think I'll go with that. Cool. All right, so we got our little uh, frame here. There's a table, let's call it fortune table. Fortune table. And I'll do FRM on the end of it so I remember it's a frame, fortune table frame. And maybe we wanna make it another color. Background color three, I don't know, brownish. That's good. And I'm gonna put uh, some sort of message dialogue here so we can give feedback. Like we might wanna read the, we might wanna read our fortunes or you know say what hands we got or whatever if you win. So on the fortune table frame, hit the plus sign, do a text label. 
All right, so just drag that in place. I might put a little rounding on this too. I just go to plus sign, U, UI corner. I might just keep it its default value. That's kind of nice. Let's make it a different color. Background color three. Uh, let's see, make it a light yellow maybe. I don't know, I'm not very good at colors. And then we'll name it. So let's name this message label. Right. And you'll see that that changed up here too, right? It's the name of the component. Um, we'll change the, the font, let's change the font to bangers. Cool. And it's tiny. So let's make it bigger. Let's go ahead and hit text scaled and that will change the text size as we need it. I'm not going to change the text itself because I'm going to do that with code. Cool. Now let's put a little uh, finished button or a quit button down here. So go to fortune table frame, hit the plus text button let's just go ahead and move that down maybe put a ui corner on that hit the plus sign u ui corner cool maybe make the color different make sure your text button is selected let's see we'll make it i don't know uh what green light green light green cool go down here for the name we'll call this uh quit button That'll work. We'll go make the font banger so it's consistent. And this we want to change the text. We want it to be like quit or finish or something. I'm going to say quit. And then text scaled. Boom. There we go. All righty. So we have our little table. Let's make the table pop up when we hit our yes on our dialog on our dialog box so that's pretty easy to do because dialog boxes are client side only you can see it when you click on it and so is the ui right here right so let's go to fortune table frame hit the plus and then we'll put a local script on there maybe i'll call this reading right so it's my read my card reading and let's get a reference to the dialogue, right? So the dialogue is sitting up there in the workspace under the fortune teller on his head and it's called dialogue. I didn't change the name. All right. And then we need our table, our, um, our fortune table frame. I'll make that a lowercase fortune table frame. So that's the variable for our table and that's script.parent because we put the reading script on the fortune table frame. So we just go script.parent, that's the frame. All right, and now we'll do um, a quit button, right? Script.parent, that's the frame. So we've got to go down a level to get to our button. There it is, quit button. And we also have a message label. Script.parent, message label. Cool, so what are we gonna do? Um, we have a reference to our dialogue. We're going to have to do stuff when that happens, when we click on our, our choice. So let's make a function to prepare for that. We're going to call that start reading, right? Oops, I got a little typo in there. All right, so we get our table. We call it fortune table frame. And we're going to make that visible, right? Now it's already visible over here. So when we play our game, we don't want this showing up until we click on somebody. Let's go to our fortune table frame and then we'll click invisible. Boom. We'll click the, the, we'll uncheck the visible and it'll be invisible. Cool. But now when our reading starts, we're going to make it visible. And then in our message label, there's a field called text. We're going to say prepare to be amazed, right? Did I spell that right? I think so. All right, let's bring that up. Let's get all that started when we hit our, our choice on our dialogue. So we have our dialogue reference. We have a dialogue choice selected, right? That's an event, right? So we're gonna listen for that event. When somebody selects a choice on our dialogue, we are going to connect that to start reading. Start reading will fire. And let's do this. 
let's make sure, so we're going to get two variables. We're going to get the player that made the choice, and then we're going to get the choice itself. So through the magic of Roblox, when the choice is selected, whatever function you have here, it's going to catch two variables. It's going to be the player that made the choice. It's going to be the choice that they made. Right? So now we have to check to see if it's the appropriate choice. Right? So we'll say if choice equals equals dialog dot yes, right? we put a yes in there, we'll say then, and I'm going to encapsulate that, those two instructions into this if statement. I'm going to go to format selection, format document, and now it's nice and, nice and neat, right? So that's pretty cool. And I think that we're, that's it. We're done, right? Oh, we need to make it go away when we're done the game. So let's get our quit button. Quit button. Activated. And that's an event. When you click on the button, we're going to connect that to an anonymous function. We're not going to give it a name, right? We're going to say function. And then I'm going to say this fortune table frame dot visible will be false, right? So we're going to make the table go away. I think we got everything. It's pretty simple. Here we go. Hit play. There's a little guy. Let's try it out. Ooh, let's look for errors down here. Output. Would you like your fortune read? I would. Boom. Prepare to be amazed. Now what we should have done, we should have put the, the placement of that in um, scale instead of pixels, but this is fine. This will get you up and running. The important part is catching the event, catching the choice selected, and then bringing up your UI so you can work on your game. I thought that was pretty cool, pretty useful. Hopefully it is, and I will see you guys in the next video.